So this is how your received signal is going to look like. The blue shows the ideal on off digital uh, signal. On top of that you have this pink which is fluctuations. So this is signal plus noise. So what you have here as uh, you know the mean here this corresponds because of the information that you have this is your 1 and 0. But around that you, you are not seeing this but what you are seeing is only the pink. So you take the mean of the pink that will give you the mean signal right. So that is the average uh, RDP received RD is a responsivity P is your received power whether it is for 1 or whether it is for 0 corresponding received power. That is what you would use for threshold detection but all these noise will contribute to the signal to noise ratio right. So the noise is actually quantified by the variance of this. So if you do a histogram here, if you do a histogram of your high and a low you will get something like this a Gaussian that is why it, what it makes it additive white Gaussian right. And you can also do a histogram here this is your sigma here corresponding to uh, 1 state and this is corresponding to the 0 state. Now you can quantify the thermal noise and short noise by the spread of your histogram and that spread uh, is so this is this is a Gaussian right. So if it is a Gaussian you know that the distribution is 1 by sigma root 2 pi e power x minus mu or t minus mu the whole square divided by 2 sigma square minus t minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square where t is your variable mu is your uh, average value corresponding to 1 and 0 it is going to be different. But what is important is the spread okay. This spread can be quantified as the variance of the noise current and the variance of noise current because of thermal noise is 4 kT by r I am not deriving these 4 kT by r times the noise figure this fn is the noise figure of receiver amplifiers. You had a chain of amplifiers in the receiver the noise figure of that is fn. If you do not have a chain of amplifiers you just put fn as equal to 1. So this is your power spectral density multiplied by delta f delta f is the bandwidth of the receiver and that is decided by that filter remember you had a filter in the receiver and that 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 is what is primarily uh, deciding the bandwidth the receiver bandwidth. And of course, you will adjust your receiver bandwidth according to the bit rate. So it simply means that you should not be using a large bandwidth receiver when your data rate is very small because when you use a large bandwidth receiver, you are multiplying your power spectral density of noise with this bandwidth and if you do not really need that bandwidth, you are actually adding a lot of noise in the system. So you can calculate this number and that will be the spread of your 1. Uh, not just that you should also add the short noise. Now short noise remember it is dependent on the power optical power and optical power is in turn dependent on uh, or, or the way you want to quantify that short noise in the receiver is through current variance in current. So it is twice Q, Q is a charge of electron, uh, I, I is equal to your RD times input power RDP in ID is your dark current multiplied by delta f. So the power spectral density is 2q times this again this can be derived from the Poisson statistics but I am not going to do this derivation but it is just 2q i and you see the noise in the receiver uh, the short noise in the receiver it does not depend on whether my current got generated because of the signal or the current got generated because of the ambient light. Everything is a Poisson process because it came from the Poisson statistics of light. So that is why you have to add your ID also in the, uh, in the short noise process okay. Now tell me whether uh, the total noise in the 1 state and the total noise in the 0 state will be identical. If I drew the histogram of uh, the noise in the 1 state and the histogram in the 0 state is that going to be identical? Is the spread going to be the same? It is not going to be the same because the short noise is going to be different. Thermal noise is the same but the short noise is different because the power levels are different. 
Okay. So, if I in principle the spread here is going to be more than the spread here and this spread is important because or rather the histogram of the one state has a tail in the zero state. It means that if I have an event happening here, that is an error that I am making. If the histogram is so broad that it is falling on the one state, above the threshold all these events are going to create an error for me, which is why it is important to quantify the noise. Okay. Now, let us take a look at thermal noise. Uh, it is 4 kT by RL. RL is your load resistance, effective load resistance. Oh, it is already written here. Delta F is a bandwidth, Fn is a noise figure of amplifier. Uh, you can see, you know, uh, Boltzmann constant is, of course, a constant. Temperature, you can say it is a room temperature. And let us say this Fn is equal to 1, for instance. Okay, for, for ease of calculation, let us take Fn is equal to 1. Then you can simplify this numbers and then you can write as standard deviation. So, square root of variance is your standard deviation. Standard deviation, if I substitute all this number, it comes out to be and if I calculate this for per unit bandwidth, it comes out to be a very easy number for remembering. It is 4 divided by root of RL where RL is in kilo ohm. And the answer is in pico ampere per square root hertz. So, if I substitute K, if I substitute room temperature and multiply that number, it is going to be 4 by square root L, square root RL per unit bandwidth. So, it is per, per square root hertz because this is from variance I have moved to standard deviation. So, question for you to just get the um, feel for the order of magnitude. Okay. So, let us say I have an RL of 1 kilo ohm. Okay. The bandwidth of my detector is 10 gigahertz. Can you calculate the noise current? When I say noise current, what it means is the spread, uh, standard deviation. So, I can write the noise as uh, my current as I is equal to some I mean plus some delta I, which is the variance, uh, which is the standard deviation of noise current. It means that my current is, my photo current is some I mean value and plus this sigma, this variance, plus the standard deviation corresponding to that variance. So, I do not have to remember kT and all that, I can just say it is 4 by root RL, where RL should be in kilo ohms to get this unit in pico ampere plus per square root hertz. It is 4 divided by root 1 in pico ampere per square root hertz, but I have a total of 10 gigahertz bandwidth. So, 4 pico ampere multiplied by square root of 10 power 10, 4 pico ampere multiplied by 10 power 5, right. If I were to, because it is white spectrum, I can just multiply the um, value here. So, this will be 4 into 10 power minus 12 multiplied by that is pico ampere multiplied by 10 power 5. So, that is 10 power minus 7. So, that is 4 micro amperes, 0.4 micro amperes. If I convert that into voltage, your load resistance is 1 kilo ohm, the voltage is going to be 0.4 millivolt. So, if I have a resistance of 1 kilo ohm, in your oscilloscope, you are going to have a fluctuation right? whose spread is something like 0.4 millivolt. So, when you are doing these experiments in your uh, lab, you know, you are, sh you are seeing your signal in oscilloscope, in your digital oscilloscope. So, you are seeing something like some noisy signal here, some noisy signal here. Now, you can exactly quantify where that noise is coming from. If I have a resistance of 1 kilo ohm, it means that the thermal noise fluctuations in the receiver would correspond to a spread which corresponds to this, this spread is 0.4 millivolt. That is what it means. Okay. Now, let us calculate short noise and try to see which one of this is larger. You have short noise, you have thermal noise. 
let us try to see in a regular circuit which one is larger. So, for that let us take Rd is 1.2 receiver uh, uh, responsivity power is let us calculate the short noise for 1 milliwatt for a 10 gigahertz system and assume there is no dark current. So, what was the uh, sigma for short noise here 2 q i delta f sigma square is 2 q i delta f which is 2 q i is R d p input that is my current times 10 power 10. Can you calculate the order of magnitude? I would like to find sigma not sigma square because you want to know short noise current not the variance. Is it dependent of on load resistance? The current is not dependent on load resistance, but to calculate voltage you would need the load resistance. So, we are keeping the same load resistance as the previous case roughly 2 micro amperes approximately and the voltage will be 2 millivolt micro ampere multiplied by uh, 1 kilo ohm which is 1 but you do not typically have 1 milli, milli uh, 1 milliwatt power at the receiver 1 milliwatt is typically what you have at the transmitter ok. So, for receiver you would have current uh, power at least and 3 orders of magnitude lower than this or 4 orders of magnitude lower than this. So, you would end up having 1 millivolt uh, milliwatt divided by 10 power uh, uh, 4 you will end up something like 0 0.1 microwatt this is the order of magnitude that you will typically have. So, in that case what is the short noise? So, power reduced by uh, 10 power 4. So, current reduced by 10 power 4, square root of current reduced by 10 power 2. So, this one will become 0 0.02 millivolt. So, if you are looking at the short noise at the transmitter, at the transmitter typically you will have 1 millivolt of power, ok. But at the receiver typically you have much smaller power levels. Now, you can actually calculate what is the power level for which your short noise becomes equal to thermal noise. If you calculate, if you if you take your uh, transmitter and without attenuating, without the fiber you directly put it on a receiver, your short noise dominates because that is larger typically. Whereas, in a system you have transmitter, you will have a lot of loss in the system and then you will have a receiver. At the receiver typically it is the uh, short noise that uh, thermal noise that dominates in the system. 